Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52, and this is what it says. And they came to Jericho, and as he was going out from Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. And when he heard that it was Jesus, the Nazarene, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many were sternly telling him to be quiet, but he kept crying out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, arise, he is calling for you. And casting aside his cloak, he jumped up and came to Jesus. And answering him, Jesus said, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabboni, I want to regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and began following him on the road. Pray with me. Jesus, this time, this place, now, create in it space enough that we might hear your voice and follow. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I read a story about the French king Louis XI. It was in the 1400s. He was an avid believer of astrology. And he came across one astrologer that had predicted a lady in his, his court had predicted the date of her death. He said she was going to die in eight days and sure enough she died in eight days. Well, King Louis... The 11th was incredibly impressed with that, but he was also afraid of it too. He thought if anyone can tell the future that well, that he needed to go ahead and kill that person right away. So he called the astrologer to his court. He instructed his soldiers that on his cue, he was to throw the astrologer off the balcony. Well, when he had the astrologer before him, he said, I was very impressed by your ability to tell the future. Can you tell me the date of your death? The astrologer said, yes, my king, I shall die three days before you die. <laughs> well, the king decided not to kill him after all. I, that's rising to the occasion. I love stories like that, and I'm sure you do too, where at the time, at the right time, the person does the right thing at the right time. And that's what Bartimaeus does. He hears Jesus and his disciples coming by. He doesn't see him because he's a blind man. On the road coming out of Jericho. Jericho was the oldest city in the world. And the road between Jericho and Jerusalem, the way that, that Jesus and his disciples were going was among the busiest of all the roads in the world. And certainly, Bartimaeus was not the only 
blind man there. He was not the only beggar there. The road would have been littered with, with the lame, with the blind, with anyone hoping to get a, br- a, a, a crust of bread, hoping to get a coin, hoping to get anything. But he wasn't calling for bread. He wasn't calling for coin. He was calling for Jesus. And the people all around him said, be quiet. But that's not what he did. He called out all the more. He called out all the more. And Jesus heard him. And in verse 49 it says, Jesus stopped and said, call him here. And they called the blind man saying to him, take courage, arise, he is calling for you. This morning, that's the first thing that I want to talk about. Take courage. Rise and take courage. Phillips Brooks, great preacher in the 1800s, tells a story about a time when he was preaching about the great men and women that that started this country. At the end of the sermon, a young man came up to him and said, I wish I had lived in those far off days. I think I could have been a hero too. To which Phillips Brooks responded, My boy, every age has its opportunity. If you cannot be a hero now, you could not have been a hero then. Every age has its opportunity to take courage. And it's in the everyday. It's in the ordinary. That Jesus calls us to to take courage. Moses... It was in the everyday, it was in the ordinary, tending sheep in the fields of Midian that he saw a bush that was burning but not being consumed. And and he took courage to to break his routine and, and turn aside is what the Bible tells us. And it was there that he heard the voice of God that instructed him to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. It was David in his routine, in his everyday, doing what the youngest of the family was to do. He not only tended the sheep, but he was taking lunch to his brothers who were on the battlefield. And it was there on the battlefield that he heard the giant Goliath taunting, taunting and and ridiculing God. And that was when he had a choice, an opportunity to take courage and step on the battlefield and face Goliath. It was in the everyday, it was in the ordinary that Jesus tells a story about a Samaritan walking down the road. And there he saw one who was beaten and robbed and left for dead. He chose to take courage, arise, and take care of the man in the everyday, in the ordinary. We have the invitation before us to rise to the occasion, to rise and take courage, to rise and take courage. There's plenty in this world that will tell us to be quiet. But you and I have been given strength. Power that we don't have on our own. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. Jesus rose from the grave to live his life through you and me. Not that we might live a life of timidity, but of power, of love, of discipline. Not one day, not some day, but this day. A courage that comes from Him. Rise and take courage. Rise and take courage right where you are. Second thing that I want to talk about this morning is verse 52. Verse 52, Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. You know, often because of the way we use that word faith, there's some confusion with the word faith. When we don't know what we're going to do, we say, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'll just have faith. And we equate faith with ignorance. Well, Jesus doesn't turn to the man and say, your ignorance has made you well. He says, your faith. 
we might be better served to think of faith in the way that we use it in the word confidence. Because the root of that word confidence is the Latin word fide, which is the word for faith. We have confidence in a person, not in a hope. We have confidence in a person. We lean on, we rely on, we trust in a person. And that person is Jesus. Earl Cowden tells a story of a woman named Linda. She was in a very tragic car accident. She was pinned in her car and she was bleeding from her leg very badly. When the paramedics came, they saw that she was trapped in the car, but she was singing It didn't make sense to the paramedic, but he didn't tell her to stop. What he did tell her is to be calm and to wait just a little while that they were going to use the jaws of life to extricate her from the car. Well, she continued to sing. The paramedics were afraid that she would lose so much blood that she would go into shock and and die. But she kept singing the whole time. Even as they pulled out the jaws of life, it was incredibly loud and and, and scary. And around her, they they began to extricate her from the car. When they were able to pull her out, they tied a tourniquet on her leg. And she was singing. She was singing the whole time. They put her on the gurney and drove her to the hospital. And as they were taking her from the gurney and, and passing her over to the doctor, she was singing. And she was calm. The doctor said it was the singing. It was the singing that allowed her to to stay calm. And it saved her life. Well, what what was she singing? She was singing, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grieves to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Jesus said, Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends. He's not the man upstairs. He's not the big guy in the sky. He's a friend. Jesus died on the cross and, and, and rose from the grave to walk with us daily, this day. As a friend, as one we can have confidence in, one we can lean on, rely on, one we can trust in. Aristotle said, follow my teachings. It was Buddha who said, follow my meditations. It was Confucius that said, follow my sayings. It was Muhammad who said, follow my noble pillars. It was Jesus who said, follow me. Because it's in following him leaning on him, relying on it, trusting it, have confidence in Jesus that we have life, that we have life. It's a life that's abundant and eternal, that has the quality of eternity. Right now, today, not one day, but this day, I want to invite you, invite you to rise up and take confidence. Take confidence in Jesus. He's a friend you can lean on. The last thing that I want to talk about this morning is rise up and follow. Verse 52 says, and immediately he received his sight and began following him on the road. He began following him on the road. There are three times in my life when I was pretty sure it was the vinyl curtain. One of those times, I was on a motorcycle going 55 miles an hour, and I got off when I should have stayed on. Well, when you get off on a motorcycle going 55 miles an hour, you hit, you roll, you bounce, you tumble quite a bit. I did all those things. My body obeyed the laws of physics. I hit, I bounced, I tumbled, and I walked away. A lot of folks don't walk away. I was certain it was going to be the final curtain while I was flying through the air. Because when you're going 55, you fly a long way. Second time, I was pretty sure it was the final curtain. I was driving a car. After the motorcycle accident, I decided to drive a car much more often. And it was one of those days I was driving a car. Well, my car threw up a rock. It busted the windshield of the fellow behind me. When my car stopped, the fellow got out. 
he hooked a gun up under my jaw and told me he was going to blow my head off. He didn't say, I ought to blow your head off, or I'm thinking about, or I'm strongly considering one day blowing your head off. He said, I'm going to blow your head off. And he said it in a way that I was convinced he was going to blow my head off. And he had the gun up under my jaw to do it. The third time that I was pretty sure it was the final curtain was this woman had shot her husband. I wasn't there for that part. I walked up when he was very quietly laying in the yard. He had a bullet hole in him and blood was everywhere. I was standing over him when the woman who shot him His wife appeared. She was standing this far away. And I looked at her right in the eyes. And I knew what she was thinking. Do I make tonight a twofer? She didn't. Obviously. She had the gun in her hand. She had the opportunity. But she didn't. Now, my life wasn't saved because... The woman didn't pull the trigger. And my mind didn't go to all those things that I I might say or could say or might have done. My mind immediately went to what I'd been practicing. I thanked not my lucky stars. I wasn't thinking about stars at all. My mind immediately went to thanking Jesus. Immediately went to to practicing what I I had done. It it immediately went to, to thanking Jesus. One more step, one more day along the way. My life wasn't saved because she didn't pull the trigger. My life was saved when Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave. And began giving me power that I don't have. Power to follow Him. Now I've tried to follow on my own and I failed miserably. But the power, when we invite Jesus to live His life in and through us, is is a power we don't have on our own. And that power is to walk with Him. To follow. In the beginning of His ministry, one of the very first things that Jesus did is He called people to follow Him. In the middle of His ministry, one of the very things that Jesus called, right here, is to follow Him. And among the very last words Jesus said on this earth, you got it, those words, follow me. Jesus turned to Peter. Jesus had had been resurrected from the dead, and he he turned to Peter, and he told Peter what kind of death Peter was to have and how Peter would glorify God. And Peter's response was to turn back to the other disciples and say, well, what about them? And Jesus said, what is that to you? You follow me. The temptation today, rather than follow, is to compare ourselves how others are following, whether they're doing the right thing or they're not doing the right thing. And Jesus says the same thing today. What is that to you? You follow me. The temptation today is, that, oh, are we doing better? Or are we doing worse than others? Where are we? What if Jesus grades on a curb? You know, maybe what? The response is the same. What is that to you? You follow me. This morning, it may be rather than following, rather than practicing, rather than walking with Jesus, day by day, you've been looking around, comparing yourselves to others. Or maybe you've been looking down and seeing how this world's not going the way that you thought that it should. Jesus calls to all of us, follow me. We don't have the strength to do that on our own. No, the temptation is there to look around to see how others are doing. Are we doing better or worse? And to be in competition rather than follow. The temptation is to follow other things. So when Jesus died on the cross, he took away that power to follow others 
all those other things. And when he rose from the grave, he gave power to you and me over those other things. And to follow him. To rise and to follow him. It may be that many, many years ago you said yes to following Jesus. But you recently began to wander away. Now is the time to take courage. Now is the time to take confidence. Now is the time to follow him. Or it may be that you've never said yes to Jesus. That you've never said yes to what he did on the cross to forgive you. And you want to ask for his forgiveness today. Don't stop there. I want to invite you to ask for the power of his Holy Spirit to enter into your life that you might follow him. You might not just know the, the strength of forgiveness and then feel guilty from now on out, but you might know power. The power of Jesus to, to take courage. The power of Jesus that you might take confidence, not in yourself, but in him. And his ability to live his life through you. That you might take confidence and follow. And I want to pray with you this morning. Join with me in prayer. Jesus, not one day, but this day, we need courage that you have. The courage to say yes to you. The courage to ask for your forgiveness to receive your your forgiveness and the courage to invite you to, to live your life through us we are a people that we tend to lack courage you've not given us a spirit of timidity but a, a spirit your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit that has power we don't have. Your Holy Spirit that has power to, to love. In a way that, that we don't have. Your Holy Spirit has a power of discipline that we don't have. And I ask this morning, for those who are praying with me that they take courage, but not only courage, a confidence. Confidence that you'll live your life through us. You call us to live just that life as a friend. A friend that leans on you. A friend that relies on you. A friend that trusts you and follows you. Jesus, breathe on us this day that we might put our trust in you, rise and follow. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our 
When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.